Do you ever realize that you've been doing something the hard way, beating your head against the wall for years, and one simple change makes things 10 times easier? That's what happened to me this week when it comes to threading holes, and it all started when I uploaded last week's video about this little rod bender. And the way that I decided to build it, I threaded a few holes, and I mentioned that that's not my favorite thing, and I received a whole bunch of tips down in the comments. One that came up again and again was to use a different type of tap. Now, I've been aware of different grinds on taps and their use in industrial machine tools before, but I'd never considered using one for hand tapping in my garage. Well, the reason why it's better all has to do with the chips that a particular material makes. Now, you can learn a lot about the chips that come off of a material when you drill holes in it. Now, as I drill through this half inch, a 13 millimeter thick aluminum, you can see I'm getting these long chips that come up off of here. And that's characteristic of many ductile materials, right? So this low carbon steel on this angle iron, um, it's right around six millimeters or a quarter inch thick. It's doing pretty much the same thing. I'm getting those long chips. Now, if I were drilling in cast iron, I wouldn't get a long chip like that. I'd get little filings more or less, very short, uh, kind of broken up chips. But most of the materials I work with are pretty ductile and give those long chips. Well, let's shift gears back to threading holes. The most common, at least for hand tapping, is a straight flute tap like this. Now, all of the cutting is done up here at these front few edges. And as it rotates around, you can see there's this flute here, that's what this groove is called, for the chip to be able to come off as it's being cut by the tap. But it's just directed straight over to where it's gonna run into the next row of teeth here. And for that reason, you typically have to reverse your rotation, you know, every half turn or so to break that chip off. Now let's look at this type of tap called a spiral point tap. Now in this one, there's an angle ground into this region here that cuts your thread, and that will direct your chip forward and down out of the material. And you can imagine when you're tapping a material where you get those long chips when you're drilling, you're gonna get a similar thing when you're tapping, and if you can direct that down through the bottom of your hole, that's gonna be really good. Now that only works if your hole goes all the way through your material, right? You can see straight through it, but what if you have a blind hole where your hole only goes part of the way through? Well, for that, there's a different type of tap called a spiral flute tap. And not only are these flutes or these grooves spiraled around here to allow the chip to escape up the top, down here at the cutting edge, because it's angled in that way, it's gonna draw that chip up as it's cut. Now this type of tap is gonna be really good for blind holes. Let's go ahead and try each of these out. Now, first of all, I'll use this standard straight flute uh, tap. It's a plug tap. We'll talk about what that means in a minute. But I'm gonna work my way down through here and I have to twist fairly hard on it and then back off every half turn or so to break that chip. And you can see the chips that are coming down out of the bottom of the material here are just these little crumbly pieces, which kind of goes against the nature of the material producing that long chip that we saw when we were drilling holes. Let's go ahead and switch over to this spiral point tap. And for each of them, I'm using this tap guide just to help me to uh, keep everything straight as I'm hand tapping. There's other ways to do that, but this is the way that I'm doing it. So anyway, I'm working my way through here and this is almost effortless to turn. I just twist it right around. It's going through this like butter. Now let's look at the bottom here and look at that nice long chip that's coming right out through the bottom. I didn't have to reverse my direction of turn or anything. I just powered right through the whole thing. It pushed that chip right out the bottom in this aluminum material without any issue at all. Let's try out the other tap right here, the spiral flute tap, but there's another characteristic of taps that we need to talk about first. And it has to do with the taper on the front edge of it. Well, there are three different tapers that you can have and what they define is how many of the threads on the tap actually cut your thread into the material, right? And so the longest one that uses several different threads to distribute that cutting load is called a taper tap. 
And then on the other hand, the shortest is called a bottoming tap. You might want a bottoming tap like this if you're cutting down into a blind hole because when you get down there, you're gonna have threads down pretty much as low or you know, within a thread or two of uh, where the tap goes. Now in the middle is a plug tap and that's what's in my uh, tap and die set and most standard tap and die sets. Now this spiral flute tap is actually a bottoming tap and that's what they're typically available as because the spiral flute is going to pull your chip up out of here. Now when it's used in a machine tool, that can line everything up and get uh, it going right away, but because I'm hand tapping here, I'm actually going to start this hole with the spiral point tap because it's a plug tap that'll kind of taper its way in and help me to get started. I'll cut a few threads with this, then I'll pull it out and use this spiral flute tap. And that'll also let me get this tap guide up out of the way so that we can watch that chip coming up out of here. And again, it turns its way down through here pretty easily because it's allowing that chip to escape up through he the top here. Now because this works so well, I'm gonna go ahead and try to put this in a cordless drill, this uh, spiral point tap, which is another tip that I received when you're using one of these, you can use a cordless drill pretty easily, which I've done before with uh, you know regular straight flute taps on thin material, but never on anything a half inch thick or 13 millimeters thick. So I'll line this up here and then go ahead and pull the trigger and it just powers its way through, pushing that chip right through the bottom just in the same way. I mean, this is so cool. Um, let's go ahead and try the same thing on steel. And once again, you know, when I'm using this straight flute uh, plug tap here, I have to back off and break that chip again and again, really kind of going against the nature of this material to produce that long chip. But when I switch over and use this spiral point tap, once again, it's pushing that chip right down through, no problem. It goes through so easily. I mean, just to you know, try this out with the drill again, I'm gonna go ahead and put my drill clutch all the way down on the one setting. And then I'll go ahead and chuck this in the drill chuck here and just see if I can move through without slipping the clutch when it's turned way down like that. And it, it does, you know, it goes right through. I'm getting that chip out the backside. So I'm, I'm totally sold on using these for any kind of through hole because it works so well. I picked up a nice set of them. I mean, it was a little bit expensive, but you know, they're also available as individual taps. I picked up a couple of these just individually as well. Um, if there's a common size that you're using. So hopefully this helps you out. And uh, you know, if you like this, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below. We'll see you next time.